Hi everyone, I'm Nicola Kane, Head of Strategic Planning, Insight and Innovation at CFGM. Uh, so my role is about developing long-term transport strategy for Greater Manchester. Um, the Insight bit is about making sure that's evidence-led and that we talk to users about what they think of the system, how we can improve it. Um, and the innovation bit is about testing uh, new transport innovations uh, and using those sort of trials and, and pilots to shape the future of transport. And that's really um, kind of why we were so keen to get involved in the e-scooter trial and to really go into that with an open mind. So not a kind of fixed view of, of what, what we want from e-scooters, but um, to look at what role they might play in a, in a more integrated multimodal transport system. So really pleased to um, be here today it was fantastic to work with the University of Salford on, on this research uh, and it's great to have that kind of independent view of what's worked well what could be improved um, and we can then use that to shape the future of this trial but also thinking about how we roll out shared micro mobility in future so so it's brilliant it's given us a much more nuanced view I think of um, of the role of modes like e-scooters um, so before I talk about some of our reflections on the trial itself, I think it's important to set that within some broader context. Um, and those of you who've been, who, who live in Greater Manchester hopefully have seen the Mayor's vision um, of a London-style, fully integrated sustainable transport system. Um, and the word B-network was used to start with just to focus on th that vision for active travel and um, with a focus on uh, delivering a... Um, a much more integrated walking and cycling infrastructure network. That's now been broadened out to cover um, a range of sustainable modes. Um, so thinking about how we can develop a more integrated approach to um, the bus network, we'll be starting to roll out franchising from next year, um, integrating that into um, the, the Metrolink network, uh, thinking about shared modes um, like a demand responsive transport. We've obviously got our cycle hire scheme now, which is um, expanding uh, across a wider geography. Um, and over time, looking at what other modes might form part of that, that B network. Uh, and it's all about providing um, a more comprehensive set of alternatives to people using um, private cars. And all of that um, really supports the vision that we set out in our long-term transport strategy, the 2040 strategy. And we have this target for at least 50% of all trips in Greater Manchester to be made um, by, by more sustainable modes. Uh, and that we think that will mean about another a million more sustainable trips being made every day. So we need to draw on all the alternatives that we have at our disposal. And that's why we're really interested to see um, what role things like e-scooters could play in that, in that right mix. So... We're using trials like this and our experience of um, rolling out the cycle hire scheme um, to develop a clearer policy framework around shared mobility. Um, and our team has been um, ha has been starting to develop what we're calling a shared shared mobility strategy, which will support our 2040 strategy. Um, and over the next uh, few months, we're hoping to share um, a draft version of that strategy. Um, it's still in development, but um, we'll give you an idea of kind of the emerging vision. Um, so thinking about how shared modes uh, like e-scooters, like cycle share, like um, uh, car clubs, um, how they can um, widen travel choices, link more people to more places um, and help to deliver that inclusive transition to a decarbonised transport system. Um, and we're developing a series of objectives to look at, well, what role can shared mobility play that other modes can't? How can they complement um, the sustainable um, modes that we already have? Um, and linking them back to the seven network principles in the, in the uh, 2040 transport strategy. So um, making our system more integrated, making it more environmentally responsible, healthy, well-maintained, reliable, and so on. So really looking at how we can shape those shared modes to deliver against those wider network principles. So what have we learned so far? I think we've probably touched on quite a lot of the learnings and Andrew's covered some of this, but um, for us there are a few kind of key, key lessons. So first of all, that that close working relationship is key. And I think we've really had that through the e-scooter trial so far. So really close um, uh, working between the operator, local highway authority, TFGM as the transport authority, also other key stakeholders like the police um, and talking regularly to users and different, um, different user groups um, to understand how well the trial's going and, and what can be improved. Um, and we've had sort of regular contact. 
that does take resource and I think that's something that we've learned that these things don't just kind of roll out smoothly without a lot of effort um, and um, that ongoing um, time and effort just to kind of keep in contact is really important so any other authorities who are looking at rolling out these kind of trials uh, you do need to go into it um, on a very proactive basis um, and look to shape that scheme and to evolve it over time to make sure that it is meeting those sort of, um, strategic objectives. And we've obviously expanded quite a bit over the two years, um, but I think we've learned don't do that too quickly. I think um, you need you need time to, uh, for schemes to bed in. Um, you do tend to get a bit of a, a bump in kind of antisocial behaviour when you first sort of expand a scheme like this into new areas. Um, so you need to make sure that you're not overwhelming your partners, the operators and so on as you expand. Uh, so taking things um, steadily is really important. Um, again, we've touched on some of this already, but there are a few things that we're focused on now over the over the coming months. Um, so where do we put e-scooter bays? Andrew's talked about this a bit already. Um, ideally, we think on the carriageway is a better place to put bays where we can, um, but that's not always possible. So how do we deal with that? Um, and we're looking at things like um, sort of co-locating different modes of transport to create more hubs. Um, so again, you can start to get that really sort of multimodal system. Parking compliance, another big issue. Um, and again, we're working closely with Lyme to look at how we can um, encourage users to um, park uh, in the right place uh, and, and looking at how we can kind of monitor that um, over time. That gender gap's really interesting. And I think that's something we'd like to explore, explore further to look at how we can, uh, why um, perhaps women are, are more nervous about using e-scooters. Um, but also what benefits it can bring in terms of, of, of women feeling safer. So I think there's more to do in that area um, and to, to work with different groups to understand um, maybe some of their nervousness around e-scooters um, and what we could do to address that. And similarly, that age disparity is really, is really interesting. I think um, that's something where we, where we could do with sort of more engagement, more research to really understand that and look at what could be done to address it. Infrastructure is key. Andrew's mentioned this. Um, Salford has been very proactive in rolling out um, new cycle infrastructure. I think that's key to provide that segregated environment where e-scooters users feel safe, other road users feel, feel safe around them. Um, so that's that's hugely important. Um, and then managing that ongoing ongoing vandalism, antisocial behaviour. Again, the police have been fantastic working with us to kind of crack down on um, any issues around that. But it's something we need to keep keep an eye on as the scheme progresses. So just to finish up, what's coming next? Um, looking at, as I said, looking at trialling the co-location of shared mobility. So what happens when you start to cluster e-scooters, um, cycle hire, perhaps car clubs as well, um, and looking at sort of locating those, those different shared modes close to public transport. How can you start to create much more of an ecosystem, an integrated transport system that sort of really fits with that B network vision? Um, we are looking at the impact of um, the e-scooters um, on our cycle hire scheme and how can we make sure those two schemes are complementary and not, not competing with each other. And we do think they have distinct roles and they're, they're both an important part of the mix. Um, we want to finalise and adopt that shared mobility strategy so we do have a really clear policy framework and again we can reflect maybe some of the concerns of certain user groups um, and really embed some of the, the really positive benefits we've seen in, in the policy environment that we put around um, some of these modes. And looking at the role of commercial operators in that B network, at the moment we've tended to focus on the modes which um, organisations like TFGM have more direct control over. I think it will be really interesting to see how we can start to integrate other modes and to work with private operators to make sure they fit with our kind of strategic vision. Um, and then um, finally, looking at the role of the e-scooters uh, e beyond the current trial uh, in terms of what geography they work um, best in and um, how we can make sure we address safety concerns, how we make sure they're as inclusive as possible and, and how we integrate them into that broader B network vision. So I'm excited to see how, how this plays out. This research is a really important part of our kind of understanding of e-scooters um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how, the, how, the, how the role that they play within that broader B network ambition. Thank you very much.